Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I'm the gallery facilitator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Today we're going to continue exploring chance. And if you joined Alyssa last week, you've already started your explorations on this theme. This week what I thought we could do is we could explore uh, ready-mades as it relates to playing cards. So uh, I thought what we could do is we could explore cards as chance objects. So what do I mean by a chance object? What I mean is, is that, so with this ready-made playing card, here my sticky really wants to curl up. Here we go. Okay, so um, right now, I have my, this playing card, this deck from BC Fairies that I, I pulled out from my uh, cribbage deck. And uh, I want to pull out a two. How do I pull out a two from here? Can you think of any ideas? Well, I think the easiest way would be to flip over the cards until I could find a two, right? But there was no chance in that. I wanted a two and I found a two. That's not how we use cards usually. Usually what happens is that we don't actually know where the two is, right? And so we shuffle the deck. And even if we were playing cards and we absolutely needed a two, we could wish, please be a two here. We could hope, we could wiggle our fingers at it, like pretend magic. But there is a chance that this isn't a two, right? Yep, it wasn't a two. So there's a chance. There's a one in, in fact, 52 chance because there are 52 cards that I have 
in this deck. And so that's the whole idea of chance. We don't know when we're seeing the backsides of these cards, they could be any of the cards um, that are on the other side. And so that's what we're going to be playing with today. We're going to be playing with cards as a chance object, knowing that we don't ever know what card it's going to be and how we can respond or how can we uh, be inspired or influenced by what happens to come up, um, what by chance we happen to pull. So if you want to explore along to, with me today while uh, making, do you have any paper? And remember, for paper, uh, I go into my recycling bin and I grab whatever paper I can find. A bunch of this was folded. Some of it has drawings on it. This is the I think back of some other paper that I have, some crinkled paper. It doesn't really matter because remember, everything that we're making and trying today isn't for keeps. And excuse me, it's just to play and explore and learn. Do you have any mark making tools? And remember, a mark making tool is anything that makes a mark. So that could be a pencil, a marker, crayons. But if you have permission, it could also be charcoal or lipstick or paint. It really could be anything. In fact, I'm going to get my ink out this week because I never use ink at Explorers. And uh, it's fun to change things up. I don't know what's going to happen when I use ink. So that's what I'm going to make with today. Um, so any mark making tool you can find. You might see that I have a dotted line here at the bottom of my, of my sticky of uh, what we need to have to make together. And I have written playing cards. And the dotted line just means that's optional. So if you happen to have some ready-made playing cards uh, wherever you're making with me today, that's great. But if you don't, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you a couple of different sets of playing cards that I have. Uh, so you can check them out while I'm making along. And um, I'm going to show you how you can make your own deck. So don't worry if you don't have any playing cards. Okay, I'm going to shift some of this stuff to the side because I got a lot of stuff out here. So we're playing with chance. You know who I am. We're going to be exploring cards. Maybe I'll put my ink there so it doesn't curl up so much. There we go. And uh, we have our paper and our mark making tools. Okay. So before we get uh, we get making some marks, and in my case, I maybe get messy with my ink. I thought what we could do is we could just look. And you know what, these are small and I have the luxury, I have the option of using some really big playing cards. That's what I have right now. And because you're looking at my explorations through the camera, this will probably be easier to see. Okay, so here are my really big playing cards. And is it a two? Can I call it two? Nope, it was a joker. Uh, and you know what, I'm going to pull another card out. There we go. So I've got a nine, a nine of spades. That's what this shape is here, where it's kind of like a, an upside down clover, but with only, um, what are these called? Maybe two half circles at the bottom and then the point at the top. So I have a nine of, um, oh, spades. <laughs> I have a nine, a nine of spades and I have a black joker here. You know what? I'm going to put the Joker away. That's fun, but not all playing card decks have a Joker or sometimes they're removed. So I'm going to put the Joker away and I'm going to stick with some cards that almost all playing decks have. I just pulled out an eight of spades. I'm going to see if I can get a red card. There we go. So now I have a two of diamonds and a nine of spades. So what we're going to do is we're going to take about a minute and we're going to try and absor um, observe everything we can about these cards. And so you can be looking at my cards, but you can also be looking at your cards. Let's take about a minute. What do we notice when we look at our playing cards? Let's go.
Okay. So this is what I observed in about a minute. Uh, you probably observed some different things um, because you might have different cards where you're making or just you're a different person. And so you might be looking or feeling or noticing things that I didn't notice. I'm gonna share with you what I noticed about these cards. So the first thing that I noticed, I think was the number. I think this was the first sticky I put down. So each of these cards, and if I was to pull out multiple cards, all of them have numbers on them. So the uh, an actual number. And you know what? There are two of them and I didn't write that down. So I'm gonna write that down now. I'm gonna add that So number. There's a number on each. And in, in particular, there are two numbers. And I could also notice where they are. And I could go top left, bottom right. This is why it's fun sometimes um, to go over what you noticed with another person um, because they might notice things that you didn't notice. And as you're talking through what you noticed, as you're sharing what you noticed with another person, you might continue to notice new things as you observe. So I wrote down number, but then as I was talking to you, I noticed that there were two numbers and that they're always on the left uh, the left side um, at the top and then the right side at the bottom. I wrote down uh, colors, black, red, and white. There's a black suit. So the spades are considered a suit or a kind. And then there's the red diamonds. There's also red hearts and there's black clubs. So I know that, but right now, just looking at these two cards, I observe that there's the black color, a red color, and the white color of the cards. I didn't even flip these cards over. And in this case, um, these cards actually are just white and um, red on the back. So I don't actually have to add any more colors. But when you flip over your cards, or if you had cards, you might notice additional colors um, that I don't have. And so there's the blue of the fairies. And then on this one, I've got some gold, uh, still some white and still some black, but uh, gold is definitely a color that I didn't have listed there. So the colors I noticed, I'm not forgetting about that background because that background might be different. Uh, what else did I wrote? Uh, sorry, write. The, sh the shapes match the number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, so there are nine shapes in the middle of the, the section and then there are two diamonds and there's a number two there. So the shapes match the number or the quantity on there. But as I was writing that down, I went, oh, wait, that's not true. There are additional shapes on these cards. And if we were going to count those, okay, I'm going to move my colors to the side. If we were going to count those, there's actually one, two, three, four shapes on the number two. And on the number nine card, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven shapes. Interesting. So are the, the cards lying with these numbers? We'll keep that in mind as we, uh, as we explore these cards some more. I also noticed that there were some rounded edges on these cards. Your cards might be really um, sharp on the corner, but all the cards that I was exploring, and here I'm gonna open up this other deck that I have. I actually have two in this box. Open up the black and the mostly black and gold cards. Pull one out. And there we go. Yep. It's also got a rounded edge to it. So rounded corners is uh, another one for these ready-made playing cards. Did I notice anything else? What else did I notice? Uh, I noticed that they were the same on the back, different, but then they were unique on the front. So there's only one of the nine of spades in here. There might be another, uh, another black nine in this deck, oof, these cards are so, oh, and there it is right there. There might be another black nine, but it's not the same. The suits are different. The, the shape on the cards are different. And therefore that means there's only one of this kind of nine, this nine of spades in the deck, but they're all the same on the back. 
And then I noticed, I think one last thing, which was this that I keep putting over here and that the texture of the cards, actually feeling them. So beyond just being visual artists, using our eyes, what else can we notice when we touch cards, when we smell cards? Uh, I don't recommend you taste cards, but do you see where I'm going with the five senses? So seeing, touching, hearing, smelling, and tasting. We probably don't wanna taste the cards. Do you hear the cards? What about when you move them? What about when you shuffle them? Yeah, when you straighten them out. What kind of sounds do they make? Right? So it's not just our eyes that we're using when we're looking um, or observing. It is our eyes when we're looking, but when we're deep looking, when we're looking like artists, we can use more of our senses than just our eyes. Okay, so I noticed a lot of things with just these ready-made cards. So now that I have this nice list of things that I have noticed, I'm gonna put them over here. I'm gonna layer them a little bit. That's okay. Those were all the things. Ooh, and I noticed a lot. What did you notice? Okay, so we have these ideas of what a playing card could be. And we know how to use them as a chance object because we know that if all the cards on the back, or at least on one side, look the same, we don't know what's on the other side. We have to guess, or we have to hope, or we have to wish. So now that we have these, uh, um, kind of definitions of what makes a playing card. I thought we could make our own. So I'm going to grab some paper and you can see here, I am just going to take some uh, paper that already has something on the other side. And you know, if you have made with me before, how much I love to rip paper. So I'm going to rip this paper up into smaller pieces so I can use them as my playing cards. But if you don't want to rip your paper, if you would prefer to cut it, you can totally go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this into some smaller pieces. I'm gonna go pretty fast. You might, you might be able to do this faster with scissors. But as I said, I love, I love ripping. I did a pretty good job there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold these. Yeah. You know what, that's, that's a pretty thick fold. So I am gonna grab my scissors here, but I could just rip them slowly. Okay, so now we have some prototype or some sample cards. They're all about the same size. Not perfect. So these cards, if we were gonna compare them, are not gonna have the exact same picture on the back. And you could do that if you wanted another time um, to uh, make maybe a patterned background. You could take a piece of paper that you knew you were gonna cut and you could make a repeating pattern. I can take my scissors really fast because we're just trying something out. And there you go. So you could have it so that you could draw a background and they would all be the same uh, for your playing cards if you wanted to do that. 
But for me, I'm okay. I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave those on the back there. I still don't know what's on the other side based on what's on the back here. Okay, so here are my cards. What did we notice from, uh, from before? So there was always numbers in the top left and bottom right, okay? There were three colors, and in that case, it was black, red, and white, but I'm going to pick, uh, oh, I was going to do my ink, right, okay, so I'm not actually going to do uh, black, red, and white, I'm only going to do white and black. All right, let's see what happens. It's way more fun when I'm getting to explore too and seeing what happens. All right, I'm gonna just take a smaller brush. Okay, red, white, and black. So we had two numbers. I'm gonna go two and two. And what else did we notice? Two same numbers in red match. Okay, that's if we had two cards. So I'm gonna put a two here and a two here. That's our matching cards. They're the same on the back, but different in the front. Yeah, we got that. Oh, more numbers than shapes. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go square and square. it matches the numbers in the corner. And then on this one, I'm going to go triangle. Triangle. There we go. Okay. So they're both black. So they match as far as color is concerned and number, but not in shapes and then more shapes than numbers. So I actually want to put those shapes there we go. And you don't have to pick a triangle or a square. You could pick whatever you want. The shape that you want, pictures that you want, objects that you want. I'm picking shapes, but you could pick uh, muffins, you could pick different kinds of sports balls. So like a basketball on one and um, a baseball on another. Lots of different kinds of sports balls. You could definitely do four different suits there. Um, but I'm just doing shapes because it's nice and easy. Okay, so now we have four shapes on our two because we've got the two small ones. Rounded edges. All right, so I could take my cards and I could actually just rip the corners off of them, make them kind of rounded. There we go. Just fold this one down a little bit. Okay, there's my rounded corner on that one. And then this one, because I have my scissors out still. Do I have to have rounded cards to make these playing cards? Would they not be uh, playing cards if I was to uh, leave them sharp on the edges? Do they need to? Do they need to have rounded edges? I don't know. You get to answer that. Okay, and then uh, shapes match number. Okay, I, I skipped that step earlier, or at least I did that step earlier. And then the last one is slippery. And I don't know if I can do this. I don't. I can't really change the material that I have, right? I'm using a different material. So as I'm using these objects, I'll see whether or not if slippery is important um, to be able to still use these as a chance object. Maybe not. Okay, so I'm going to quickly do up a couple of other different cards here. Um, and I'm still going to use my black. Maybe I'll use a red marker. Um, but I'm going to create um, maybe two or three different other numbers and you can do the same thing for your deck. Let's go.
Okay. So uh, I just made eight cards, but you could make as many cards as you want. Like uh, if you were going to count out the uh, the number of cards that there are in a playing deck. Um, so in this big deck here, I think the box said 52 because there were the two extra Joker cards. Um, for these decks right here, my BC Fairy deck, I know I have 52 cards in here. Um, so you could make 52 cards. What would your face cards end up looking like? I just uh, I just looked at the number cards for my face cards. But what would your face cards be? Would they still be a queen and a jack and a king? Or would they be something else? Would they be you? Would they be trees? Would they be shapes? Would they have faces? You get to decide what you're going to put on, uh, on your cards. Um, and because these are just art objects, not necessarily playing cards, um, you can really do whatever you want. If you wanted to make a, a set of uh, cards as an art um, activity, you were making um, playing cards, then that's great. You could exactly copy them and then um, bring in your own pictures and your own ideas of what the different suits or types of cards. So maybe your diamonds um, are actually, I don't know, different kinds of bears and your hearts are different kinds of birds and your, cl uh, um, yeah, your clubs are different kinds of bugs and your, here, I'm just going to look for a spade. There we go. And your spade is uh, different kinds of cats. So like you could, you could choose whatever you wanted for the different kinds of suits. I only did two suits. Well, kind of four because I do have the red and the black, but I just picked triangles and squares. And then I repeated them for the different colors. So I've got red triangles and red squares, and that's fine. I, I don't need to have four different unique shapes, especially because I'm just going to use them um, for art making as chance objects. I'm not actually going to use them in a game. Um, okay, so with the last couple of minutes, what I thought we could do is we could use some of the playing cards. And if you're going to continue and you're going to keep building your deck and make more cards, that's great. But I'm going to take just the cards that I made and I'm going to do a quick uh, art response, or I'm going to be inspired by or, or um, be affected by the cards um, that I pull up. So to start with, I'm going to shuffle my chance objects, my cards, really try and move them around. They're not exactly the same size. Um, they're not as slippery. So I notice that because they're not as slippery as the other cards, they don't shuffle as well. So that's an important thing to notice. Okay, there we go. So I've shuffled the cards and I don't know what order they're in now. For this game, and I'm just making this up as I go, what I'm gonna do is every time I pull a card, I'm gonna ignore the numbers. I'm going to use the color that I pull and I'm going to uh, in a minute. I'm going to put a minute on my watch and I'm going to try and draw all the things I see on my card uh, in a minute. Why don't you play along with me? Let's try. Okay, ready? Three, two, one, let's go. a minute. So I 
decided that I wasn't going to actually only have just two fours. I liked that shape. And you know what? I could have done the, the upside down four down here. Oh, I wish I kind of had. And I could keep going. This is just a start. But in a minute, I decided I would use the four over and over again. These uh, triangles, I decided to stack them all beside each other because they don't have to exactly be uh, matching to the card. And then they ended up kind of looking like hills um, or mountains with caves in them or maybe tents. And these kind of look like cactus, don't they? The four, like there's a little uh, side to the cactus, especially if I go like that. And if I added some of those extra branches to it, definitely looks like a cactus. And so I could keep going and drawing my desert scene, continuing to just use the four shapes and the triangles that I saw in my card. Let's do it one more time. See what see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over. And even if I draw over top of this, that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna give these a shuffle one more time. Here's hoping that I actually pull a red this time so that I can try something different. But if not, so be it. Okay, ready? Let's uh, let's take a minute again to draw everything that we see on the card. And go. Right. There's my picture number two. This time, I don't know why, but I saw kind of like a um, a tornado, like a twister, because I, I guess I didn't really cleanly do my lines here. And so now I'm kind of seeing this idea of like a twister moving or a, a hurricane moving across the, um, the plains. And then this time when I saw, because I was seeing the four before, um, but with both sides, and potentially turning it into like this fork shape, I started to see power lines in my head because it's this kind of hill where the tornado is going and then I put them together. So this is me being inspired by a card and I could do this with uh, a ready-made or I can do this with my own, um, uh, my own cards. It's kind of fun when you do it on your own because it may not be as perfect. And remember I, I responded to the fact that these all, weren't all the same shape and they were kind of weird and kind of messy on the outside. But what would happen if we were to pull um, a ready-made card instead? And let's put another minute on the clock. Oh, you know what? No, yeah, look, let's do a face card. Why not? Okay, so let's respond to a face card in a minute. What can we draw from what we see um, on the face card? Let's go.
All right. I only just got started. So that's a minute. But those were the things that I saw. I really liked this shape right here and the two heads up at the top here. They were kind of interesting, but I was more interested in just the shape of them. And that's why I stopped basically as soon as I had added the shape. But when I was looking at the shape up here and transferring the, over the circle, I saw this cool shape of the crown that was cut off by the rectangle and I wanted to add it in over here. Then what I noticed was the flower because my eyes are going through this. I'm trying to pick out as many things as I could. And you don't have to put an, uh, um, a minute on the clock. You could just keep going and keep drawing the things that you see um, as you notice them on the page. And they don't necessarily have to go in the same place as where you see them. We're not necessarily copying the picture. We're just seeing what we see and what we want to draw and what we want to take from it. This is really great if you're making along with somebody um, and you want to be creative and you want to play with art making, but you just don't know what to do. This is a great way of just making a chance game and then getting to see what happens together. You could create one page where you both draw what you see. And uh, when somebody notices something on the page, then all of a sudden you can't draw that shape anymore. So there's so many ways that you could make up your own game using a chance device um, that you either make yourself or you grab um, as a ready-made. This is really interesting. I could just keep going um, and see all the different shapes um, and patterns that I see in here. This card is more interesting than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop because I could just keep going. There are lots of ways to use cards uh, as a chance object and art making tool. And I've just uh, shown you a few. What could you do with cards um, to influence or inspire or affect your art making? Did you try something new today? Have you ever made your own playing cards before? Have you ever used a playing card to help you draw or make art? I'm gonna leave the camera running like I always do so I can clean up and we can be ready to make together next time. But I'd like to take a moment to think about what I will keep in my brain for my exploration today. And I think what I will keep is this um, being inspired by face cards. I really thought today was going to be more fun if we explored the number cards because there's less on the page and there's more ability for us to get um, interesting with the kind of shapes we pick or the pictures or the colors. There's just more options because there's less things on the page or on the card. But what I learned was if I'm wanting to just take different kinds of designs and shapes and see what happens, the more information that my eye can pull from actually makes for um, a more interesting warm up to try and figure out uh, how I can duplicate or copy any of the marks or shapes that I see on a complex uh, face card. So um, I think I'm going to keep that face cards are actually a really interesting warm up going forward. And I'd like to try this again in another Explores um, session that I host for myself. What did you learn today? What will you keep? I look forward to making with you again next week as we continue to explore chance, but let's finish off today's session by cleaning up and getting our station ready to go so we can practice respect and be ready to keep exploring together next week. See you soon. Bye for now.